Isaiah 41. So you can read with me. I'm going to start with five verses before that. Verse 27. Somebody wants to read with me. Why do you complain, David? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My course is disregarded by my God. You do not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope, those who wait in the Lord, they will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run, they will be weary, they will wait, they will walk, and not faint. Now we all know that last verse, but you know it starts actually in the context five verses before that. What are you complaining about? May God help you to arrest those thoughts, to arrest in your heart, arrest it in your mind, to put something here to become a school. Because in chapter 41, verse 1, be silent before me, let the nations renew their strength. What am I saying? God wants your attention, but if you would respect him, then respect him as a final authority. You know when authority comes in, and you know it's authority, you be quiet. We can do a lot of stuff, and children can do a lot of stuff, but when they recognize authority in the school, and the, the school, the, the, the teacher will say, be silent. Why? Because they recognize his authority. Are you with him? So part of become silent before the Lord has to do with the fear of God in your life, and that you have the respect for God. Therefore, there's no tantrum here, no tantrum here with my lips are sealed, but there's a tantrum here, there's a tantrum here. And not necessarily tantrum with attitude, tantrum with anxiety, maybe tantrum with a lot of stuff, and sometimes even something good, where I have some excellent ideas I want to go with me, but first you go to Why do you complain? Why do you say, by the way, it's even for God, and also disregard for God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? God believe that you will know that you will hear what His word is saying. You will know what His word is saying. What are you supposed to hear? All the answers to your complaints, all the answers to your questions. No, not at all. What you need to know is the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not retire or weary. His understanding, no one can understand. Okay, come. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. How? First of all, you must understand who he is. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens and earth. For you to come into a place of silence, for you to come into a place so that you will wait on him and that your strength will be renewed, that you will can soar, that you can run, that you can walk and not grow weary but grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory. That means from beauty to more beauty of God in your life. First of all, I must deal with all these questions, deal with all these turmoil inside, and say, I respect the authority and I will become silent, not to hear the answer. I'm not waiting for the answer. I'm waiting on him. Are you with me? I'm waiting on him. And if I can come through his word, through your prayer life, through your walk with God, through your conversation with God and him with you and what he's doing through his word and how you start to love his word and get into his word. The more you do that, the more you will understand who he is and the more your waiting on him will make sense. It will start to make sense. Otherwise, I don't know if some of you guys did it, I did it before, and then after a waiting period, you become more frustrated, more frustrated, more frustrated, more frustrated. <clears throat> but if you wait on Him, He will never leave you, He'll never forsake you. He's always there, the Holy Spirit is always there to reveal the Father, to reveal the Son of God to you, of who He really is. 
And if you can take that key, you will soar like eagles. And in the eagle, what is this soaring all about? You know the eagle out there, he can see the snake. And the snake will become the food. The snake will not be enemy. Is it not Joshua and Caleb that said, the giants, they will be our food. They are not cannibals. But they said, the giants, they are food. Not our intimidation, not, not, not the excuse. Not in the eye of the giant, we are like grasshoppers. No. In the eyes of my God, those giants are our food. Don't let the eyes of your circumstance or your giants tell you who you are. Let God tell you who you are. And what is the purpose of the giants in your life? Of how you will grow. Amen. Are you still with me? But this eagle is up there. God wants to bring you up there so that you can look down into your situation. That you can fight it from here. But if you understand the wind of the Spirit, if you understand how to wait on Him, Holy Spirit will take you there because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Not a product, product of your circumstance, not a product of your success, not a product of your failures, but a product of the heart of the Father, seated with Christ in heavenly places, and from there, you look into your situation. Because from there, you can see what He sees. You can see what He sees. Amen. Are you still here? May God help you. May God help you. May, may God help you that in you with all your strength and everything that you can have, you can do a lot of things with your own strength. God has given you some strength. He has given you capacity. He has given you talents. He has given you certain character. He has given you certain personality. He has given you a lot. But go and do that without the wind of the Spirit, without the Spirit. And he's not from God. <coughs> not by power, nor by might. He doesn't say, not by power from hell and might from hell. No, not by your power, not by your might, but by my spirit. Bring your power, bring your might, bring your personality, bring, bring your giftings, your skill. Bring it under the guidance of the spirit. But don't do something with what you have without the guidance of the spirit. And for that, wait on him. Wait on him. Amen. Are you with me? then he will get the glory in everything. The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. So, but for those, all these guys, youths, young men, stumble, get tired. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. In the running, my brother, that's running with a vision. Is it not? Hebrews 12, eh? Verse 2. Run with perseverance the race that is set before your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Sometimes we run into the situation because it's a crisis. My eyes are set on the crisis. My eyes can be set on the success. My eyes can be set on the opportunity. My eyes can be set. But in the opportunity, in the opportunity, excellent, excellent, excellent opportunity. You don't run into the opportunity unless you see Christ in the opportunity because you run with eyes Fix on only one. Jesus Christ, also perfecter of your faith. So if you're not seeing him in the opportunity, you're not running into the opportunity. Because it can be an excellent opportunity, but not God's opportunity for you. Then that opportunity, excellent opportunity, will become the curse in your life because you will get lost there in that opportunity. May God help us. May God help us. My brother, my sister, you will wait on God and get into that lifestyle of waiting on Him. Waiting on Him. Not because of fear. No. Not because of insecurity. Waiting on Him because I say, I will not go if God is not in it. I can see that opportunity. I can see that. I can see the challenge. I can see the crisis. I can see what possible could happen. And God gave me the savvy. God gave me the, 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 the brains to understand this and this and this. You can have all the brains and know how to do Jericho. And you can set up all, all the soldiers how to do Jericho. Hello. You can like, understand like Gideon and you can set up the 33,000 because you have the brains for that. Because the guys came, not the devil came. The, the guys came and said, hey, we are here with you, Gideon, for the Lord and for you. Thank you, Lord. And I take the strategy, but Gideon, don't put your eyes on what needs to happen. 
put your eyes on God. And when you put your eyes on God, God removes more than 99% of all the soldiers. 33,300 left. <clears throat> Less than 1%. And not the devil takes 90%, 99% away. God. Because he wants Gideon and the guys, they focus on him. And that the nation will say, not say, it was, wow, all the soldiers. But that they will say, wow, that could only be God. Only could, God could have done this. God in his jealous love, he wants to have the focus. Because you know when he has the focus, you can blossom. Because you were created to worship him. You were created to wow about him. You were created to honor him and to love him. So when he can position you in the purpose of why you are here on earth, in the purpose why you were created, you will flourish. And for that, he will organize situations where you need to focus on him. And afterwards you say, this was only God. Are you with me? Don't run into excellent opportunity, even if you have the capacity, you have the know-how, you understand a strategy, you can see it can work. You go by faith. But by faith, first of all, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith that you can see him and then run the race with perseverance. I set on him. Amen. Are you with me? That's the running, the walking. And walk and not faint. In the walking, it has a context of a relationship, a relational walking. It's God that wants to walk with you. It's in the Garden of Eden. God calling Adam, where are you? God knew where he was, but he wanted Adam to respond to him. He wanted Adam to come out of the place of fear, out of the place of shame, out of the place into the place of accountability. So when God is calling you into the place of accountability, out of self-condemnation, out of performance, out of shame, and he's calling you, you know where you are. But he's not going to get in there with you. He's going to call you out of that. Is it not, Peter, to the church, God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And then when you are in his mother's light, in his mother's light, the mother's light, there he's calling you to walk with him. To enjoy life with him. Walk with him in the opportunity like his father and son doing it together. As your hero, as your king, as your master, you're doing it with him. Jesus Christ. Hello? Then you will walk and not faint. You will not faint because ugh, it's sometimes hard how to walk with God. In some situations. You, you are here. You're not walking with your success. You're not walking with your excellent strategy. You're not walking with what you see. You're not walking with your opinion. You're not walking with your fears and, in, and insecurities. No, 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 no. Decide, I, I, I will not walk with this anymore. I leave it there at the cross and I turn around and I go that way. I'm going to walk with him. And in that walk, he's not... It has to do in that relationship with God that sometimes just want to speak to you. Not in the office giving you all the things that you must do. Not in the office. Not, not like a doctor sitting there and healing you. Yes, he wants to heal you. Yes, he wants to restore you. Yes, all those stuff. But this is not a walking into just into the hospital for him to do that operation here and here and all over. He's not just the CEO, he's the boss. And what he says, I want to do his will. God, I'm seeking you to do your will. He's not just doing his will. Seek him. Seek him. Because sometimes he just wants to speak to you as a father speaks to a son. As a king speak to those he even call friends. May God help you. May God help me to understand how to walk with him. How to run with the vision. Well, there, there is Christ. I'm walking with him. But I'm running towards him in the vision. In every vision, I'm running towards him in the vision. So that when I'm with him in the vision, he will get the glory. But I'm soaring as the eagle to look down into, seated with Christ in heavenly places, see, looking into. And if I understand that dynamic, <sighs> 
come to understand the dynamic. The questioning of everything is not so important. There's one guy that I led to the Lord in the army. He knew nothing about God. He wasn't involved with Christianity at all. So um, he had a girlfriend, and uh, when he told her, uh, I've, I, I've gave, given my life to Christ, I've met him, I invited him in my life, he came back and said, she says, I'm on drugs. <laughs> Because he was very good with the drugs. And then he would meet this guy from Mars and this guy there and this guy in the spirit world and that thing and that thing. So, so she was so tired of, he was meeting everybody. So he was, this is just the next one that he met. He met Jesus, you know. <laughs> Only after about a week, she started to believe in me. He really met Jesus in the sense of accepting him by faith and his life changed. But this guy... He had all that, all those questions. He was the main atheist. Ah, oh, in that bungalow, he didn't say because of this reason there's no God. Then all the other atheists would say yes because of that reason there's no God. And he would come and argue with me the whole time. And so one time he he would come to me and say there's no God. I didn't go to him. And later I was so fed up I just told him in love, Futsak. <laughs> but they say you cannot say that in love. Oh. So that evening I gave up, but, and the next day he gave his life to Christ. And then from there on, a lot of guys in the evening would come to me. Um, and there at my bed, there's three guys, uh, Domini, my nickname then. Uh, we, we, we want to give our lives to Jesus. I said, oh, nice, and lead him to the Lord. But after a day or two or three, I said, where do you guys come from? No, Mark. There's a guy that know nothing about God. When he heard this a trinity, he was like, wow, Father, Son, Holy Spirit you know and I said no what is he saying to you because they just come he said no Mark says to us you're going to burn in hell and if you don't want to burn in hell go to Dormini <laughs> and uh, so we had to train the men what about evangelism how it works but he had all these questions and then one day he came to me and said Dormini I still have all those questions but the love that I found in Christ and who he is is so overwhelming that the questions doesn't matter at all. The answer doesn't matter at all. Because what I found in him, oh, my brother, my sister, don't wait on God for an answer. Don't wait on God to understand. Because too much of that understanding is so that I can feel safe to be in control. To be in control. Because I understand, now I feel I'm in control. God would really, on purpose, many times, want you not to understand. So that he will be the focus. When you go to God, Hebrews 11 verse 6, eh? First of all, when you go to God, you must believe that he is. And then, that he's a rewarder of those who seek. Him. That rewarder is answer to prayers. Things that you trust him for certain breakthroughs. Rewarder is not, oh, he's going to give you... A pizza, or a, with all respect, or a Ferrari, or a this, or that. No, that reward is an answer to prayers, a breakthrough for certain things that you trust Him for. But first of all, you need a revelation of who He is. And then certain things will already just fall in place. And you will come to a place of peace, of the anxiety gone, or the fear is gone, because of who he is. Not because things are sorted out, now I don't have fear, now I'm not stressed anymore, because everything is now sorted out. Not at all. But because he is. Are you with me? Therefore be silent before the Lord. I'm giving you verse 9. <coughs> I took you from the ends of the earth. I've called you. I said, you are my servant. I've chosen you. So do not fear for I am with you. You are commanded not to fear. No, we must deal with the fear and to sort it out. This and this and this and this must happen. No, first of all, I confess that I mean I have fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen? 2 Timothy 1, 7. But at the end of the day, I choose not to sin anymore. I choose to believe in him as the final authority and in the presence of authority I will not fear because I'm safe with this authority that is in his name with his word in his presence in that place I'm safe no anxiety no fear 
So God expects you not to fear because you need to understand that he's with you. Do not be dismayed. Other translations has to do with anxiety, has to do with stress. Why? For I am your God. I am your God. I'm there for you. I'm yours, you are mine. And just because I am, and just because I'm with you, I expect you not to fear. I'm, I'm expecting you not to stress, not to be anxious. Getting to the Word so that you can come to know Him. And the more you will come to know Him, you will see all these stuff will disappear. Perfect love drives out all fear. Who is perfect love? God Himself. Come to know God as the perfect love. And God, as the perfect love, will drive out all fear. 1 John 4, 18. Amen? Then only after you understand the revelation, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Then also I will strengthen you, help you, uphold you with my righteous right hand. Righteous right hand was many times symbolic for Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father. Let's say strengthening. Help, uphold. God will strengthen you. God will help you. God will uphold you. But many times we are praying for the strengthening from God. We are praying that and stand by faith that God will help you. you know, hello? God, please help me with this. Please strengthen me for this. Please uphold me above the, the stuff that I will not suffocate, that I will not drown in what I'm going through. And I'm praying for that. But that wasn't the first thing that God said. First deal with the fear as a sin and get into the revelation that I'm God is with you. And secondly, no stress, deal with that because of the revelation that you choose to receive through the word that you understand the God that is with me is my God. The God that is with me is my God. But so many times we just accept that the fear that is with me is in me and I have such a faith in the fact that I have a lot of fear. And I call that honesty. Yes, you can have the emotion of fear. But in you is a spirit where there's no fear. No fear. You have not received a spirit of slavery to fear again. But the spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption that means that you are his. He is your God. Therefore, no fear. But why can we so easily just accept it and it's just normal to say, I have this fear. I have this, as if this fear belongs to me. I'm identified with this fear. I'm identified with the stress or anxiety. Why am I so quick to accept that? Not anymore in Jesus' name. No. What fear is coming knocking here? Who are you? I want to say, go to hell. But yeah. <laughs> This is not your home, sorry. There's no, this is not a home for fear. This is a home. This is a temple for a spirit not of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. So that's the only spirit that is welcome in this life, in this heart, in this being. Make the decision, choose that, and then come to know the indwelling spirit of God in your life. I will uphold you. Then at the end, near, nearly the end, I am the Lord. I am the Lord who takes hold of your right hand where God wants to guide you. Do not fear. I will help you. Do not be afraid. Do not fear for I myself, I myself, I myself will help you. I'm your redeemer. And then at the end, <coughs> oh, how will I say this? I, the Lord, will answer them. The Lord of Israel, I will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar, the, all the trees and all the, the things that can grow where there's water. What are we talking about? We know in one, not in now, in one John 4, no, John 4. 
with the lady at the well, Jesus asked for the water. At the end of the day, he said, I will give you the living water. And we can pray for the living water. We can pray for the living water, and that's right. And God will always give the living water. And you will receive the living water and receive the living water. But when you take responsibility, God says, the water can become a fountain of life in you. It must become a spring of, what? Like a spring of life. It would in your word a fountain van levende water, a fountain of living water. But it's not just going to be, I'm asking for a fountain of living water, and boom, there's a fountain of living water. The water that you receive, when you work with it, when I understand a prayer life, when I understand the word that is life, I start to eat the word, I start to speak the word, I start to believe the word, I start to act on the word, I put it in my in my prayer life, I have this active relationship with God. I understand praying in tongues. I understand how to be with God. Then it becomes. Everybody say, it becomes. Then with the living water that you have, it becomes a spring in me. A fountain. And then suddenly, there's this fountain of wisdom. This fountain of peace coming forth. It's more and more just there. But if there's no word... They transform the mind. If there's no word to align the heart, if there's no word in prayer to keep and guard the heart, it will not flow. There will not be this precious fountain of living water that will bring clarity, that will bring freshness. And I will always have to, in the crisis, find some water in some other way. That's not God's plan for you. I will answer. I will make rivers flow on barren heights. My brother and my sister, there where you go and work, there at the university, there at your workplace, there in the hospital, where you are, there's barren heights. God will make rivers, bring rivers, freshness, wisdom there. What? How? Through you. Through the fountain of life in you. If you have worked and allowed the water in you to become a fountain, then God, you and God together, you will go into that desert place and the water will be there. God will send you into the barren heights and rivers will come forth. Springs within the valleys. In the valley, there in the valley, it will spring forth from your life. Hello, I will turn the desert into pools of water. Where, where, who? Because of your presence. Because of your presence in the desert. God sent you into that desert place. And from you must come forth God's agenda. What is God's agenda in that desert? He wants the water to be there. But too easily we pray for the trees, we pray for all those stuff, but we're not supposed to pray for the, it will come, it will come. You make sure, you take your responsibility before the God, before God as a wise virgin, not a foolish virgin. Hello, as a wise virgin, so that your, the environment around you will change because of who you are and what you carry. Who you are and what you carry and what is coming forth. Is it not Romans 8, 20 times, 30 times we spoke about that? Creation is waiting with eager expectation. Uh, with this groaning, with this groaning, with this groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God. Waiting. That desert is waiting for you to rise up so that creation will be liberated. Not to be a desert anymore, but that they will, everything will flourish because of what's coming forth through your life. That university must flourish in Christ. That school must flourish. Hospital, where you are, is supposed to flourish. The nations will flourish if the children of God will rise up, jump into the word, get into prayer, get into the lifestyle with God, speak forth what God is saying. Out of a dryness of religion. And when the nations will rise up like that, in that desert place of that nation, just the fountains will burst forth. The rivers will come down. The pools of water will be there. Why? Because the children of God grew up. They took prayer not as a trick to get something. They took prayer as a lifestyle in a relationship. Got into the word because they love the word. Not just to find an answer for a situation. But because they choose, I love his word. Go and read Psalm 119 and you'll find more than 50 things of what you're supposed to do with the word of God. Just read through Psalm 119 as a prayer. Only a bit every day. You don't have to write, read the whole thing. 
but get into that and pray in line with God's perfect will of what you must do with this word. Amen. And so many times you will see that in so many ways, that one of the main focuses is, I love it. I love, I appreciate, I respect your word. You will see that coming forth in Psalm 119. Let it be your life, men. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Why, why, why? All these things will be planted so that what? The people may see and know may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this through your life so the people will not see understand and know see understand and know that you are you are doing an excellent job you are very successful you have accomplished nothing of your calling if they can see how successful you are you have accomplished nothing but if they can see through what you've done I can see this is God. I can understand this is God. I can hear this is God. Then you are successful. Then you are a faithful servant. Then you are ambassador of Christ, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, the fragrance of Christ, the letter of Christ, hello, trophies of his victory. May God bring that in you. I'm just saying that again, last time. So that the people, so that the people may see. God's going to do all of this if you rock up for this relationship with him so that the people may see know consider understand let's say see, see. Know, know consider understand. understand that the hand of the lord has done this but my brother and my sister out there in the world it will become more crazy and crazy and crazy and crazy it will become more ridiculous more ridiculous going to the school and you and and use Jesus as a swear word, no problem. Curse somebody in the name of Jesus. Use it in vain. Use it as a swear word, no problem. You don't dare speak about Jesus with respect and say Jesus loves you to somebody and that Jesus has a plan for you. Then you're in trouble. Maybe long ago, <laughs> you're in trouble when you use the name of the Lord in vain. When you would curse somebody and do this and do all this other rubbish then you will go to the head office today you will go to the head office if you spoke about jesus with respect and spoke to that person about jesus now not in every school i know okay thank god for his mercy but with so many nations and so many schools and places that's how it is but for a church that will not wait for the crisis, but will wait on God. They will rise above. And you'll become so full of the Spirit, the fountain of life. You'll become so full that you cannot but speak about Jesus. Now you struggle because you're not full of the Spirit. Now that was in the past, not anymore. It's not going to be like that anymore. But if you struggle to speak about Jesus, the problem is you're not full of the Spirit. Why? Because you're not taking time with him why because you're not waiting on him why because you're not asking holy spirit to open up the word so that you come to know the word and on the basis of the word the holy can, spirit can bring in the flourishing through your life <sighs> god's gonna help us amen. amen we are with one another still so my brother hell will be exposed hell will be vomited out on earth that's it and they will be radical of how there will be nothing about Jesus. No, no religion. You cannot believe in him. But to believe you're coming from a baboon, you need a lot of more faith to believe you're coming from a baboon than to believe that Jesus created everything. So there is faith in a lot of schools. It's just you are just allowed to believe the following. You're not allowed to believe in Jesus. But you're allowed to believe all this other rubbish that you come from the baboon. <sighs> no. In the midst of that, God has such an expectation that you will what? Have you not heard? Did you not see? If you come to know him and he's the focus, you run into more chaos and more chaos and more chaos. You run into the chaos. Why? Because your eyes are fixed on him. 
when you see chaos around you, there at your workplace, where you, there where God will call you. God will call you unto Him. God will call you to run to Him in the midst of chaos. Because then people will look at your life and they will just have to know, see, consider, understand that the hand of God is on your life. The hand of God. This can only be God. That's not that man. It's not an inner man to say that. They looked at uh, Peter and those guys and said, hey man, these guys, they, they're not trained. They are, they are just plain fishermen. But they speak with such authority. They speak with such wisdom. And all these guys that studied for 20, 30 years, everything about the word, they were just shocked and amazed. <clears throat> May the world be shocked by the wisdom and the authority coming from you. Every, somebody say amen. amen. Let it be so for your life, my brother. Let it be so for your life. But in the midst of all of that, his God is excited that he's raising up a church as wise virgins that will be there. That is not just wise virgin, foolish virgin, when, on the day when he comes back and the foolish guys will go and burn in hell and the rest will go to heaven. It's about tomorrow. If you're a wise virgin, you, you have this extra oil. Through the oil of the Holy Spirit, you will just know, you'll be sensitive in the Spirit and you'll be there where Jesus is. In the open door, where he would go in, you will go with him. But the foolish virgin will not understand what's happening. They will go to the crisis. Ooh, we're supposed to get extra wealth. We're supposed to, we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to get into the word. We're supposed to walk with him. We're supposed to speak to him. We're supposed to declare his word. We're supposed to. Why? Because we are now in the crisis. But the wise virgin, because I love him, because I want to come to know him, because I want to get into his word, not as a religion, but because of this relationship, the wise version, and then tomorrow you will just be sensitive. When God is there, you will be there. When God is there, you will be there. Not get lost in translation and you don't know where is God and what is God doing. And seek him. Seek him. And you will soar, you will run, and you will walk with him into eternity. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you guide us. God, I pray this for every man, every woman in this place. Forgive us, Lord, for having such many times have a lot of questions and waiting on you for answers. God, I pray that we will wait on you. I pray that we will grow up, Lord, in Jesus' name, where it's not about ourselves and our own questions, and, but it will be about you and how you want to be glorified. I pray that you will open the eyes of the heart, hearts of the, everyone here, Lord, so that they will see you and run with vision into the place where you are and not just into an opportunity that looks excellent. Thank you. Protect us, Lord, against that. Protect us by your spirit and by your wisdom that we will know how to walk in such a way. We trust you for breakthroughs in that as you create this hunger in us, Lord. And that today our life will be Christ and the death of our flesh will be gain. We thank you that you come and minister to every man and woman in this place. Open up even through Psalm 119. Open, open it up for each one of us how to appreciate, how to love your word, Lord. How to love your word. Not to read because of religious, religious law. Because I'm supposed to. But because I love you. I thank you, my God, that you come and do this that you come and do this in and through us. So we pray in Jesus' name and all say, Amen. let it be so. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Great. A few announcements.